Hello guys, I hope you're all doing fine. So here we are, back into our world, full of magic and mystery and fantasy as well, the world of Photoshop. Today I'll be talking over the process of an environment concept that I created and I will try to make you understand the whole thing, because that's all about. Getting good at something requires passion and a lot of patience, and when I say patience, I mean it. You'll have to repeat everything you do, every process, you'll have to go on full spend 5 hours in front of your PC to achieve the decent level mode, and now let's talk about the work itself, shall we? So as you can see in the beginning of my artwork I'm always cutting out images that blend well and how do I know that they blend well? Well, uh, I said too many times well, damn. Well, <laughs> it's because I am making a sketch or a mock-up before the whole process to get the feel of what I want to do and to figure out if it's possible because sometimes life actually doesn't give a shit about you and no matter how cool your idea is it won't work and you have to accept it. You have no idea how many projects I've thrown out because there was that missing key from them. Well, there were a lot. Also, I'm always picking images and assets that have the same direction regarding perspective, light and shadows. The choice itself depends on the quality of the image that I get. You noticed maybe that I am always selecting a color from the sky or background and sort of draw some depth with the brush at the middle of the artwork or better said at the point that the sky hits the ground um wait th that is called horizon i'm dumb as hell man okay never mind i love cutting shapes like those mountains or cliffs because i pretty much never want to have the same thing as in the image i'm opting to refresh it every time even if it means that i can copy the image and put it on another side of the canvas Here is coming the color range tool, proper, proper handy. I will say it again, color range is awesome because it allows you to sample colors from an image which is the best thing that ever happened to me since I am using Photoshop. Why? Because the whole time that I would spend trying to cut and select some innocent clouds or smoke from an image which doesn't work every time by the way, not even 40% I'd say, with the color range I will select those light parts in a couple of seconds, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. In my works I like to use these ambient smokes or clouds because this is simply my style, that's how I got used and it works for me. Maybe for someone it's easy to paint those clouds, maybe you are using fog brushes, that's okay, the final result matters 
every time, not the process. We all have different opinions about how can you achieve a certain effect in Photoshop. For example, what I did with the color range could have been achieved if you would have painted smoke and fog. But I would lose time. I'm using the fog brush to cut out pixels that I don't want from a smoke image. Sometimes yes, I, I am in need to paint them, but in this case I don't. Okay, so let me tell you what filters I am using for um, example those rocks from behind or that rock in the right of the image. Well, I'm using brightness and contrast or maybe sometimes exposure. I'm using color balance to get the same colors, hue and saturation if needed and I paint a lot of shadows. Yes, you heard me. I am taking me brush and I paint the shit out of them until I achieve that mood and ambience. I usually use a dark blue or brown, depends on a scene, color palette. I'm softly painting those shadows in the beginning and completing with a big hit after that. Some people ask me about levels and my opinion about this filter is a very good one. I even used it in this artwork in case you didn't see, not much, but I did. Usually in levels you have that histogram there. This filter has the power to adjust brightness, contrast and tonal range by specifying the location of complete black, complete white and mid-tones and it is very very useful. I'm not using it so often because I'm not used to it. Anyway, use whatever you are comfortable with.
you saw how I knocked out those glows from that image to make the light hitting kind of thing of the ground and mountains that reflections there that are gorgeous you would probably ask how I thought about it well as an artist I had a lot of trouble thinking about concepts and ideas so working my ass off improved this thing looking at the picture and imagining a thousand things happening to it isn't from here and there it requires practice and experience I added those two knights fighting back there on that um, island I think or whatever it is doesn't matter an environmental art usually have to give the scale some credit you have to get that contrast between big and small that's what I did we are getting close to the end of the whole process you can see that I'm playing a lot with the lights and shadows I'm shifting them and doing a lot of color adjustments also at the end of the artwork I'm adding the grain I consider it fits my style and it blends well the whole scene I think the name for this image should be Misty Valley. Um, I don't, I'm not sure about that. I think it is because it looks like a valley to me. Even there is water. It has that ambience. So basically you can do environmental art if that's what you really want. You can do character 3D design art or whatever you want to do. If you don't start creating, uh, you will not find your style. Only if you practice a lot, if you give yourself time, give, give the whole flow, the whole thing, give it time, give it months, maybe one year. For me, it was one year. For you, it may be two years. For another guy, it could be two months. Depends, depends on the situation and how, let's call it tell talented you are because at the end of the day um, art means a bit of talent I mean let's say 10% talent or 5% talent and 90% work and practice that's it that's what the whole thing means I can do pretty much everything but 100% I adore creating fantastical and realistic landscapes so it matters what you like to do not what others tell you to do this is the last video for this month with a simple theme from now on we'll focus only for halloween -ish stuff because after all it's the spooky season and we will have a couple i mean more depends on my mood and how i'm like willing to create artworks well we'll have a lot of spooky edits so that's what you should know Okay, so I want to say a big thank you if you stayed with me until the end of this guide, because after all, it is a guide or tutorial or whatever you want, call it whatever you want. I am revealing you my secrets, my path for creating an artwork like this, and I am really convinced that you will have something to learn from here. So without more delays, don't forget to share this video with your friends, to subscribe if you didn't, to leave a like and a comment to the video, and also hit the bell button to stay notified of my upcoming posts. And with all that mentioned, don't forget that any idea can become reality in Photoshop. See you next time.